Well, so I actually have two abstracts with virtually identical titles. And once again, uh, but really the, the purpose is to use them in the context of these new FLT3 inhibitors. Patients go into remission, uh, but we know they have a high relapse rate. And detecting the leukemia at some low level, one cell in a million, one cell in 100,000, is uh, of paramount importance to determine who needs either further therapy, such as a transplant, or who needs maintenance therapy with one of these FLT3 inhibitors. It's been a technical challenge to develop these assays, but essentially both of these abstracts come up with very similar methodologies, but essentially the same type of assay, a PCR followed by next generation sequencing. The result is a very sensitive way of picking up the presence of the specific mutation in these patients, an ITD, at one cell in 10,000. So now, uh, in one abstract, we're using that assay to look at patients who get a complete response with giltritinib and ask, does dropping the level of this mutation down a certain threshold, in this case 10 to the minus four, does that equate with better survival? And yes, it does, quite dramatically so, as predicted. So that's reassuring. The assay works the way it's supposed to. Patients with deeper, better emissions live longer. The second uh, abstract, again, an MRD assay based on the similar methodology, asks a very different question. We looked at a series of patients who were in remission who had received induction chemotherapy and went into a morphologic remission, but they had just received induction. So we know they have residual disease at some level. So we asked, all right, what level do they have residual disease? And the assay could unerringly pick out every patient's in internal tandem duplication mutation. What we noticed was that half of the patients in this group had actually gotten induction chemotherapy plus a FLT3 inhibitor. The other half had just gotten induction chemotherapy, and we were rather startled to find, although we shouldn't have been in retrospect, that the level of MRD was an order of magnitude lower if you'd gotten chemo plus a FLT3 inhibitor compared to chemo alone. This actually is exactly what we would predict, but no one's ever shown this before. So we were rather startled and pleased at this finding. It actually explains data from the RATIFY trial in which patients who got a remission to mitostaurin uh, and chemotherapy went to an allo transplant and did much better. So everybody said they must have lower MRD levels, but no one had proven that. We now have the means to prove that.